what give it life. It give it understanding until the same thing. Only the word of God can change your world. As you listen to this podcast by Christian Information Network Ministry, your world shall shout. Join me as I bring up God's servants, Pastor M.K. Adaramala, as he blesses us this afternoon. Thank you so much. Let's have a seat. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Uh, let me appreciate my host, as Reverend Adeshola. Thank you. We are not driving away from your seat now. Amen. I want to appreciate you. Thank you for following with all your heart. Mommy, I, I double my respect since yesterday. Mommy was here since morning. You know, after the morning session around 2 o'clock, Abby. And she, um, she didn't go anywhere. We were in the office here together. And till evening session, till we finished. I think I left her began, behind. Nobody was expecting her this uh, today's session. And she's here. The Lord will strengthen you. In the name of Jesus. Uh, let me also appreciate the deputy chairman from those, uh, from, sorry, for your state. <laughs> God bless you, sir. Thank you so much. You are blessed. And all the rest of the men of God in the house, I want to appreciate everybody. You are blessed in Jesus' name. I pray that this uh, afternoon, with the little time I'm going to spend here, is to be a turning point in our lives in Jesus' name. Yeah. Father, we thank you. Speak to us, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. A better amen. amen. Uh, uh, people behind the media, you know that my voice, so manage my voice for me. <coughs> amen. I, those of us who are here yesterday, I, I told you that uh, the team for this convention uh, if we are to if you ask so many people men of God to talk on it I know there are different size, sides to the scepter but and I told you yesterday that I prayed and the Lord led me to this part of the team. The Reverend um, Shola, am I right? Okay. Spoke about authority. Yesterday morning, no, yesterday morning. And, but I spoke about power. And I have told you that yesterday that there is no way I could finish it. That I will come back today to conclude uh, all that we have to know about how the power of God can come into our life. And I said it's a matter of serious discussion particularly among us that are ministers of God. that the power of God is so important that even God himself that's what validates his authority as God. That's what establishes throne as God. If not for power We'll have been saying another story now. So God does not play with power. And it is the power that builds his kingdom. 
this kingdom we are talking about. And therefore, it's not a subject that you can shy away from. And yesterday, I was able to tell us that everyone God has called must be anointed with the power of the Spirit. Everyone. And we started from our Lord Jesus Christ himself. That when he came and it was time for him to start his ministry that I believe that we are continuing in our small way today. The first thing he did was to go and seek for the power of the spirit. We all know the scripture. And it took him 40 days in the wilderness. And I remember I told her yesterday that I was um, you know, from the YouTube. I was watching a documentary. When that documentary said uh, they show a portion of place with no tree, no grass, desert, that that was the portion where Jesus spent 40 days. Just because of the importance of the power of the spirit. God didn't say because he is the Lord. He is the son of God. That he didn't need to seek after it. That he didn't need to fast or to pray and to spend those number of days in the wilderness for it. From that alone is enough to let us understand that if it is the ministry that he did that he has committed to our hands to continue that there is no way we can do it without the power of the spirit. And I told us about his disciples just before he left after resurrection he told them Luke chapter 24 verse 49 and he said behold I send the promise of my father upon you quoting from Joel chapter 2 verse 28 I send the promise of my father upon you but tarry ye in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high now you look at our Lord Jesus Christ before he started the ministry at all he knew he has to seek for the power of the spirit he did not attempt to preach not because he didn't know the scripture of course he is the word himself but that will break protocols he would not have achieved anything here on earth The same thing he told the disciples. And he said, You must tarry, remain in the presence of God until you are clothed with power from on high. Simply telling them that don't attempt to do any ministry without it. Don't go and start a church first. Don't even attempt to open a, uh, an office. International Ministry of so and so. Until you will be endued with power from on high. And even in the Old Testament setting, none of the prophets of the priest of anyone God will give an assignment that will not be anointed and I want to understand that this 
even our own seal of approval to ministry. Every other thing you talk about, they are all included inside this power. For example, without purity, without holiness, God will not release the power. So if we are talking about power, therefore, they are all inclusive. So, but where we stopped yesterday was that we, I said, we need to investigate some of the demands on us before God will release his power. And I told us that grace is free. Grace is what? Free. free. Because why? Someone has paid for grace. That's why salvation is by grace. Every other thing we receive from Calvary is by grace. They are not necessarily answerable to what we do. But when it comes to the power of the Spirit, the Lord himself began to show us that this thing will never come until a price is paid. And that's just the truth. While the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is free, the power of the Spirit, the power of the Holy Ghost is not free. There is a price to pay. So we now began to investigate some of the things that have to be done before God we anoint us with the power of the Spirit. Don't forget we have our roots in um, our text. Computer people, are you with me? Okay. Give me Genesis 49 verse 10. The scattering shall not depart from Judah. Nor a lawgiver from between his feet until she will come and unto him shall the gathering of his people be. In the course of this convention, so many things have been said about this scepter. His favor, his sovereignty, his power, his... Uh, so many things have been mentioned. But I just zero my own on just this. And the Bible says actually what validates Judah is power. What he has above his own, his own uh, brethren is the power. Behind that authority is power. And I used to tell people when you we teach authority there is power delegated power behind that authority. So you don't teach authority in isolation. It will never work. We talk about the policeman or this um, traffic order that will just stop a vehicle by Straighten forth his hand. Don't forget that the whole power of the whole nation is behind her. Otherwise, that authority will not work. And so, that is why power is important. And let me tell you, there are so many things I said yesterday and I want to repeat it. And I'm talking with passion. Especially those of us who are, who are here, who are ministers of God. We have ministries. You must be anointed, sir. 
Is somebody hearing me? Yes, sir. There were, I, I told you about Seru Babel yesterday. Frustrated. After the captivity of Judah, they have returned to their land for more than 20 years. Nothing was happening. There was no forward movement. They remained there. Until God opened the eyes of Zachariah. And he saw. And he heard the voice of God. And he said, send this word to my servant Serubabel. Not by might. Not by power. But by my spirit, said the Lord. When my the anointing comes, he now told them that, Who art thou, O ye mountains, before Serubabel? Thou shall become plain. So when your ministry is undergoing frustration, and it appears nothing is working, and it appears the preaching is not touching lives, it appears people are coming to church, but they are not staying. And it appears something is not yet in place. The anointing of the Spirit upon your life is not in place. So that's why we have been talking about. I'm only taking you back a little to what we discussed about yesterday. It is my, it is my prayer that God will do something in our life in Jesus' name. Uh, can you give me Mark? Chapter 9, verse 28 and 29. Verse 28, okay? And when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, saying, Why couldn't we cast him out? They have been dealing with demons and evil spirits in the life of a boy that was having epilepsy. And the nine disciples at the valley has tried and nothing happened. But when Jesus came, he just rebuked the devil and the demon left. They were not contending with the fact that they couldn't do it. No. But they were amazed that as he has taught them to use his name, they used the name of Jesus and the demon was not obeying them. Was not responding. So because of that, they now, when the crowd had gone, privately they now asked the Lord, why couldn't we cast him out? Why couldn't we cast him out? That question, we must find an answer to it. That is what is taking us to what we are saying now. I can pass them. Why couldn't I cast them out? Sometimes we are facing with challenges, serious challenges, and we wonder why nothing happens. At the end of the day, we console ourselves. I say, well, is because he has no faith. I remember reading about um, this woman, Ketri Kuma. Ketri Kuma attended a revival, a program, miracle service. And the evangelist prayed. He did everything. And nothing happened. And so the evangelist was accusing the people of not having faith. According to the testimony, the woman was very, very disappointed. That, that couldn't be. He accused, hello? Uh, you are distra distracting us. Oh. You are distracting us too much. Amen. I'm too sensitive to distraction. I don't know whether I, I need deliverance from that. Too, too sensitive. So distraction. 
Amen. I'll wait for you. Amen. We are discussing a very serious matter. Go and call me your general overseer. Come and sit down. Go quickly. Very serious matter. Without this thing, we are not moving forward. That's not where we are going. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I will be talking from the Bible and I will also be sharing experience with you. So, Kenji Kuma was disappointed. That is what pushed her to go and see for the face of God. That couldn't be. Accusing the people of not having enough faith. Or sometimes when we now pray, it's okay, the miracle will happen along the road when you are going. Ah. The disciple asked Jesus, I know there is power in your name. The name are the name of Jesus. Every day should bow. But we prayed. Nothing happened. Why couldn't we cast him out? I need an answer to it. One of our members was an evil brother. His uncle's son suddenly ran mad. Real madness. They brought him from school, from the university. Who? Oh. And um, it was serious. Very serious issue. And the church they attained, they went into fasting. The pastor came. They did everything. They did everything. They did everything. Nothing happened. They have gone medical. Nothing happened. So I believe even that madness couldn't be an ordinary madness. So, and you know, these people who are not born again, so they decided to say, okay, we'll take him to the herbalist. So, they now called this our brother. They told him. He said, let my pastor, my pastor will pray for him. They said, good. He said, you can call him. Let me give you his number and call him. Off. There's no way you should come here. Uh, he said, my pastor have no time. Just call the, his number. He said, no. They were very angry. So the brother now called. And he said, sir, this is a situation, a situation with my so and so. I said, okay. They should put, this, put it to speaker. And I just spoke two words. You demons of insanity. Come out in the name of Jesus. And I forgot about it. In our church, we give testimony every Sunday. So when testimony time, the brother was out. He said he had never seen something that is too quick like that. Now, what we want to bring out from this testimony is this. Not even just pastor now. So many people prayed. The whole church prayed. The whole church fasted. And the demons of insanity did not respond. And another man of God just say a word. And the demon left. Why? So, these disciples of Jesus, they wanted to know. Why couldn't we cast him out? And many times, even in our own uh, ministry too. We must have done one thing or the other that, you know, that the demons say no. That I need more than what you are doing. I have not seen what I should suppose so I can't come out. It could be cancer. Sometimes cancer can be serious. It could be cancer. And so we need answer. I myself, I need what? Further answer. So we have started 
answering the question since yesterday. I think we are just in number one, number two. Abi, those of us who are here, what? Eh? We were to go to number three. It's one and two. So I've now repackaged it. Uh, number one, we said that the person that is seeking this anointing must be a son. All those sons of um, Jacob, they were sons. Anyone who does not belong to them can never attract those prophetic blessings. And I have said that is very, very important. Even though we are not supposed to be talking about that at this our level. But nevertheless, foundation will cause it to remain foundation. Nobody ever tried to build a building from the air. It will start from foundation. I'm talking about genuine salvation. Genuine conversion. That is hinged on repentance. And I've told us this time around, sometimes some of us who are evangelists, we cancel ourselves. Somebody can say, I'm giving to soul winning. Ask him the content of the gospel that is preaching. Whether it's actually out of win so or not. But when you read the Bible very well, you see that we are sent to preach the gospel of repentance. Luke 24 verse 47. He said that repentance of sin might be preaching his name. Luke chapter 15. You know the parable in that Luke 15. Then verse 7. He said there is joy over one sinner that talk to me now that repented more than so it is the gospel we are sent to go and preach is the gospel of repentance from sin and I gave you the formula of genuine salvation yesterday first I'm sorry Mark chapter 1 verse 15 Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is at hand repent ye believe the gospel. Not just faith in Christ alone. That faith must be a faith that repents. So repentance must be emphasized. Today preaching of the gospel of jesting aside repentance. Jesus preached repentance. And the, the apostles they also preached it. And I told you of, on the day of Pentecost after Peter had preached that wonderful message and the heart of the people were pricked and they in fear they said men and brethren what shall we do how can we be saved then Peter said repent that's the first thing he said and then give your life to Jesus and be born again and so that must also apply to our lives the issue is that if we are harboring any sin then I'm sorry you are not saved That's, that's very very important therefore even if we fast we have seen men that go into 40 days and seeking for power and they are not living right in their family they are not living right reverend I'm not comfortable with all, all this I'm very sorry come and take your seat here and you must not stand up from there until I finish. You can ask my wife. Am I right? In my church, as big as we are, okay, as small as we are. The moment I mount the pulpit, you can't go. Okay? I don't know the level of uh, sugar diabetes would I want you to sit down for one hour to hear a message. You can't go out. You are not permitted. When I was the chairman, on oh, those state chairman for PFN. I still discipline. I still discipline. Because I, before we came on board, uh, when Mercy will be going out, they will be signing paper. Ah, no. They will be taking attendance and be passing paper. You don't pass paper. We finish our meeting. So, and it's one of the reasons why people, the level of Receptivity in the church is getting low. 
So, sir, I'm sorry, sir. Huh? So, I've said it at your brother. They should go and call you. We want to. We must find answer to these things. And the Lord will give us answer. Amen. Are you following me? Yes. Okay. Even sometimes when you, if you invite me, I will have given my own do and don't before I preach. It's just because this is also my own church. So that's why I didn't talk. I have do and don't. People don't sleep under my message. I will walk you out. You don't sleep. You don't just keep on running all about and be. Anything you don't do before I start preaching, let it remain there. May God honor us. In the name of Jesus. So brethren, we have said to that yesterday. That must be genuine conversion that comes out of repentance. And I used to say that salvation will solve every problem in, in man's life. It will solve marital problems. If a man is born again, he will not divorce. If he's saved. Some of the crises that you say to pastor and his wife, you say to quarrel, 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 is because they have not been encountered by this genuine salvation I'm talking about. So it's all about repentance. Amen? There are so many things that we do that we don't know that is sinful. So, we said to that yesterday. Then, number two, I mentioned righteousness. And you know that God will never use a man that is not living a righteous life. When you look at the uh, um, Jacob's all the prophetic declaration over all these his children, some of them that have done something many years before like Reuben. At the time he did it, God, I mean, uh, Jacob did not say anything. He was waiting for the dying minute. When his scale will become irreversible. Simeon and Levi, the same thing. When they were, you know, you know the kind of anger that came upon them, that killed. Why should God Remove number one, Reuben, number two, Simeon, number three, Levi, and is a fourth son that now became the, the carrier of the scepter. It's because of righteousness. God will never jump the protocol. Let me show you one scripture. Matthew chapter one, verse one to three. Matthew one, the book of the generations of Jesus Christ, the son of David, and the son of Abraham. One preacher says, why should David come before Abraham? I don't know. Come back to verse 1. Verse 1. Hello, media. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Let's leave that. Go to number two. Abraham begat Isaac. Isaac begat eh? Who was supposed to be there? Esau. Am I right? Why? Because of the same principle. You know there is a right of the bat of uh, there's a that's a right, right of the firstborn established and trench in the Bible that the firstborn usually carry the blessing, usually carry the you know the authority. But now you see Abraham begat Isaac, Isaac begat not Esau but Jacob. Now Jacob begat is supposed to be Reuben. But let's say, okay, Reuben has done the work supposed to be Simeon or Levi. But what disqualifies all these people we are talking about is unrighteousness. It's unrighteousness. It's clearly stated in the Bible. And when you look at Judah, there was something that he did. You know, it was Judah that saved the neck of Joseph. 
You remember that? He said, don't let us kill him. Don't let us kill him. God wrote it down. <laughs> you are not hearing me. God did what? He wrote it down. He wrote down his righteousness. Verse 3. And Judah begat is supposed to be L. E R. E R. Then followed by Onam. Onam. Then, even then, we still have Sheila or something like that. The third born. Now, first born, if I, the Bible says it was wicked, God killed him. Second born, God killed him. The third, the third born, we don't know what God said, no way. And evil Perez is a twin with um, Zara, is it Zara or whatever? Perez and Zara, they were they were twins. And God said, this is the one I want to choose. So when you go in the book of the genealogy, you see a lot of things like that. How God will knock the re ah, look at Ruth. And many of them like that. So what we are saying is that there are, we are spoken extensively about this yesterday. Righteousness. Righteous living. And we are able to prove that different kinds of righteousness. Even though the imputed righteousness is there. There's, there's a righteousness God wants us to practice. He that doeth righteousness, the Bible says, is righteous. There's a doing part of it. We are implanted by righteousness so that we can live a righteous life. Righteous family. There are people that will have make heaven if they have not married. Married that's supposed to be a blessing become a cause. Even sometimes we say it on the pulpit that there is no family without crisis. I've never witnessed one. One. One day. Do you know when the trumpet we sang? We preach it. So, uh, when we are doing marriage cancel, uh, there is no family without a uh, fight. But later we settle. Suppose the trumpet sound before you settle. Well, let's leave all that. So number three now. We are investigating the answer to the question. Why couldn't we cast him out? Why am I powerless before certain level of problems? Why? Do you know that some problem they bring to you? Yesterday we, 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 we closed with a scripture. James chapter 5 verse 14. That scripture is my scripture any day that is challenging my life. If any man seek, let him call for the elders of the church, the leadership of the church. In this way, now you as a general overseer, you are the leader of your ministry. Maybe your headquarters is at Ibadan, and they are bringing somebody from uh, Moro, uh, very near Ife. One of your branches there. They say he has cancer. Let's go to Papa in uh, in Ibadan. And the moment they come. And they have phoned you that uh, daddy will come. Don't come. We can take him to the BUCH. I mean, God, they can teach in hospital is in a fair. <laughs> That's the level we are going. That nothing, nothing will embarrass you any longer in Jesus' name. Amen. Give me a better amen. amen. Number three, that must be in place is passion for souls. What do I call it? Write it down. Passion for soul. Now, I've discovered that all the men that have this genuine anointing over their life, the source of that anointing is that they have passion for soul. Because that's the purpose of the release of this anointing. Jesus got to the tomb of Lazarus. He wept. That is the outflow of passion. You see, I, I thought about passion recently. And I went into dictionary. And I was surprised to have all that even secular dictionary say about passion. You see, passion is like, it's a feeling. An affection. A feeling. Sometimes when this thing feeling comes upon you unconsciously, 
tears can be coming out from your eyes. Now, you see the reason. Hello? Are you listening to me? Why in those days we are referring to that it was not difficult for a Christian to shed tears. You are not hearing me. I can say all of you here. When last did you see a Christian that weep? I'm not saying somebody who has lost his cow and is weeping. I'm not saying somebody who, who somebody, you know. I mean, out of passion, when God opened your eyes, one of my prayer warriors of those days, one of the leaders, because we emphasized rapture so much in our church in those days, that uh, he now went and go and pray. Say, Lord, I want to see heaven. Show me heaven. You know, the spirit of that thing was moving in the church that time. And do you know that night, the Lord took him to hell. Are you listening? Took him to where? Hell. Ah, you are talking about heaven. Why souls are going to hell? Which heaven are you coming to? That's what Jesus told him. He couldn't believe. Can you imagine me crying to God, Lord? I want to see how beautiful heaven is. And God has decided to take me to hell. So God is mindful of people that are going to hell. He's concerned. He sent his son to go and pay the price. Jesus left his throne in heaven. He became you know, sin for us. And he has done all that. And he gave us the assignment. And we are not doing anything about it. Now, everything you do in ministry, if it doesn't come out of passion for soul, is zero. I'm a prophet. I, I know the consciousness to become prophet now is growing. When we were in those seventies, sir, an African Christian, you see at the back of his name, evangelist, so and so. Evangelist so and so. It was that time that the materials of uh, Taylor Osborne was flooding this uh, Nigeria. You see all those books? Uh, join this chariot? Um, many of them like that. So winning. So, but now God is no longer calling the evangelist. This tallest finger has cut, have been cut off. So every other now is growing. Very easy now to be prophet. Prophet, just because he can see vision. Seeing vision does not make you a prophet. Everybody is a prophet. Prophet. I'm sorry if I'm offending you. I don't know anybody. You know, I don't know anybody. No con joke, quote me. Anybody, no labor. Are you hearing me? So, <laughs> is somebody hearing me? I'm, so what I'm simply saying is that, and it's good. But if that calling is propelled. By passion for soul. Let me tell you something. You know, I'm a PFA man. Sorry, sir. <laughs> Amen. 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 Do you know that there are, it's either your ministry is so oriented or body oriented. How do I mean? In Mark chapter 8, Jesus said, what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose what? He didn't say and lose his life, oh, his soul. The soul is the eater that is used in the Bible to represent the eternal part of you. To represent what? Eternal part of you. What shall he profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? He said, what shall he use to exchange for his own soul? Nothing. Then in Matthew chapter 10, verse 28, Jesus said, fear not a man that can kill the body. But he cannot kill. So it means there's a difference between the body and the soul. He said, but I tell you whom you will fear. Fear him that can kill both the body and send the soul to hell. And now, if I use all my life to concentrate on welfare, and I go to America, I collect used cloth, used shoe, carry it to a village, and give all of them, and I didn't reach to their soul, 
they will still go to hell, sir. If I distribute money to people and I'm good in charity, which the Bible has commanded, is somebody hearing me? And I use everything just to, he said, the Bible says, just be caring for everybody. And you keep on caring, spend the money of, and organize food, organize the, all those things. And you are not actually reaching to the souls. You have not done well. And do you now know, I was talking about my own constituency. Do you know that most of our ministry is geared towards reaching the body, not the soul. Most of the preaching, most of the thing, go and look at our poster outside. We want to do program. Our hambies, our flyers. Look at what they carry. Somebody can see be healed and go to hell. Somebody can see be raised from the dead and see go to hell. So, but when you look at Jesus, look at all the parable of Jesus, all of them. The kingdom of heaven is like it. The kingdom of heaven is like it. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. We are not li live inside the body ministry. If I is part of what I'm talking about. So what I'm simply telling us is that passion for soul. So what I'm saying is that if the passion is not there, because the real reasons why God wants to release that anointing on you is to win soul. And therefore there must be passion. Passion for soul. Do you know what passion does? One of the reasons why we cannot pray long hours because there's no passion. Passion is the, is the, is the, is the fuel that engineer us to do everything we do for God. Passion for soul. You now see the reason why many of our brethren of those here we are referring to who spend hours on their knees for prayer. Now let me just divert a little bit, sir. Uh, hello? Uh, I, I, I rediscover some lost uh, aspect of ministry about two weeks or three weeks ago. And I started teaching it. Paul in Ephesians chapter 1. Give me Ephesians chapter 1. Verse 15 and 16. 15. Wherefore I also after I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints. Yes. Now listen. Cease not to give thanks for you. Making mention of you. In what? Oh. A revival is, is happening already. As I was sharing this thing that you see here. Paul, the apostle. You know by through him, most of these churches in the New Testament were founded. So, Paul could still have time for each of the churches in intercession making mention by name. That means Paul will have a prayer list that he walk upon every day. You are not hearing me. Are you hearing me? I have not been having that. I just pray general prayer. Paul said, I cease not to give thanks. Making mention of you in my prayers. I've started prayer list now. I use my iPad. I've created a file there now. Making mention of you in what? In my prayers. He was not a pastor of that. He was just a general apostle. But no wonder he said, pray without ceasing. I've been wondering how could somebody pray without ceasing? Mommy, if you have 40 names in your list now, and you need them, by the time you spend two hours, you will know, eh, Abike Ojo, you pray maybe two minutes, 
after you pray and you know something, uh, you go to James Dari, like that, like that. Ah, by the time, so I now remember that that is what gave us the little revival we had in our career in those 90s. That after service, you know, we do a lot of miracle programs. So people come to church and we collect their names. We have counseling session, they collect the names. Then the prayer warriors, they will go and collect those names from them. They had their own file. Because weekend they are going for prayers on the mountain. They will be in fasting on Friday and Saturday and break Sunday morning. They will carry the names of these people inside the file. After they have prayed general prayer, they, now, they will now start on one by one. They will take those names one by one. In those days, either by mistake or by error, you enter into our church, you have been trapped. I'm just telling you the truth. Just the truth. Not because of the sermon, but because of this scripture making mention of you in my prayers. Should general overseer have name? Yes. There are people it's not, the list may not be long. Maybe, maybe two, maybe three, maybe four, maybe ten, maybe fifteen. You say somebody is not serious in your church. When he come like this, and not next month before he will come, ah, what are you general overseer over? Oruko, I will we? Oruko, I will check you. The name we enter. After you have finished your general usual prayer, la 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 la, go to this one now. And you begin to cry to God over his head. Galatians chapter 4. That's another short show. Verse 19. Quickly. Wow. You didn't tell me where I'm going to start. Stop. And unfortunately, I forgot my resource. So, I can go till any time. Amen. Huh? 15 minutes more. Okay. That by your own uh, calculation. Look at this, sir. Are you seeing this one? My little children. Who was speaking here? Talk to me. Who was he speaking to? The church in Galatia. He said, my little children, this is what I did to establish you. My little children, of whom I travel in bat. Hey! Are you hearing me? My little children, of whom I travel in bat. Paul was more than a general overseer. He was the apostle to the Gentile world that wrote almost two thought of the whole epistle in the New Testament. We had time for this. I travel in bath until Christ be formed. I used to tell people sugar coated teaching cannot form Christ in anybody. Until Christ be formed. In you, all these people that are misbehaving, Christ have not been formed. This late come out to church and you have not seen it that people can go to hell because of late coming. My little children, of whom I travel. So because I fail now to travel, our mommy and the mommy here, they know what it means to, to labor. That's the language. That's the language. If you hear the Yoruba version, only in your mommy, KKK, Timo Robi, Timo Shekinio. You that hear Yoruba here, talk to Timo Shekinio. Timo Robi. So, tell the way we pray now, are we, are we, are we, are we traveling? Are we robbing? She ain't robbing. Go into robbing. So that's just a digression. I'm just telling you that passion for soul. You see the passion of this man we are talking about. Peter has been locked up in the prison, maybe for two days or thereabout. 
And immediately he was released. He didn't go to his wife's house. The Bible says he was standing preaching. Am I right? Out of Apostles chapter 12 is there. Then all of them like that. Acts chapter 8 verse 4. He said where they were scattered as a result of the persecution in Jerusalem. Where they were scattered abroad. Number next. Number what? Number four. Strong desire for the anointing. I will only read one scripture and move on. But let me tell you that's another important condition for this anointing. And sometimes, even in my church, I shout, All the leaders, nobody is looking for power. Nobody. And I begin to understand the reason. They are not ready to pay the price of power. Let somebody put Isaiah for me. Isaiah chapter 44, verse 3. 44, 3. For I will pour water upon him that is what? Tasty. That's it. That's the principle. And floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed. And my blessing upon thy offspring. And do you know the best gift you can receive? Is the gift of hunger. Hunger. Hunger for God. Hunger for the things of God. It made the difference between Jacob and Esau. Esau said, what will this battle I do for me? God said, I hate Esau. Esau have I hated. Jacob have I loved. Just because of this basic difference between them. Even before they were born, God has spotted it a long, long time before that time that this man, this man called his all. There is nothing of spirit that will be important to him. And we are divided into this generation, Esau generation and Jacob generation. All those who are Lord testing for the anointing of the spirit, they belong to Esau generation. What will this thing do for me? And we are selling our birthright for a muscle of pottage. Amen. I say amen. amen. Hunger. You know the story of Elijah. Elijah. Who was following Elijah? From Gilgal to Bethel, from Bethel till they get to Jordan. And compare Elisha with the sons of the prophets. These were in Bible school of those days, learning how to do the work of a prophet in the, in the Bible school. You know, this educational system we have today is the Greek mode of educating people. But the Jewish mode is to be under a teacher and follow him to learn how he does his things until you know it. But the Greek, they put you in a class, a teacher will start teaching you how to do it. So, when it comes to this issue we are talking about <laughs> The point is that Elijah understood the importance of anointing in ministry. In which, if I can only achieve that, I'm happy. That you know that you can't go far. You will just remain at this same level. 
until this anointing comes upon you. Because what we are to do first is what we are doing and we are not doing first. I've told you about Jesus and his disciples. The Bible says that go and tarry in Jerusalem. Don't start any work until there is an approval from heaven when the spirit comes upon you. And do you know it was when the anointing came down and the clothing tongue like fire sat on them and they began to minister. And things happened. God can still do it today. Am I right? And he can do it through you. So but the point is, important thing is there is that you must have a strong desire for it. I have so many of my notebook that I've written. If I open it like this, I will see it. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 8 says, Let your garment be always white, purity. Let your head lack no ointment, anointing. Daily new is daily, daily. Benihin said, I have rather died than to be with without the anointing for just one day. I have rather died. Let me die. They knew the importance. That they know what put them in office is that anointing. What made them relevant is that anointing. What made them to be affecting their generation is that anointing. What give them that name is that the anointing. Remove it, they are back to ordinary person. You can go and ask from Brother Samson. That man that misused anointing. Who have been anointed from the womb. I could just sleep on the last of Delilah. And he showed that's what the devil is looking for. When he removed the anointing from you, you become an ordinary person. And they are doing their work. Really. Some of us who are pastors can eat from anybody. You are born again, they can't kill you, but they will empty you. All these agents of darkness, all these witches and wizards, they will empty you. They get you sick. And all that they are doing is so that you will not get to that anointing. But today we are going to pray together, something will happen in your life. If there is any mark of the enemy over your life, that is resisting anointing. Greater anointing will destroy it. Amen. Give me a good amen. amen. I know men of God don't shout. I say give me a good amen. amen. So, number four. I'm just giving you five. Okay, I'm giving you six. I mean, strong desire. Am I right? Eh? Who told you that I'll finish? I'm on strong desire. I guess that you want to go on time. Let's finish this thing. Let's finish it. After that one, you remain two. Now, and I put it here. The reason why you must have a strong desire. I say number one, because the answer to all human problems is in your hand as a minister of God. That's why you must have strong desire. If you know it, maybe you are not, um, the challenges are not coming to you. A brother just, they just brought a boy to my office. Sometimes last year, they said he was having cancer, stage four. And they, and they, they brought him to UCH, and they said there is no hope again. What have you been doing? He said he, 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 there was no any sign. Stage four. They now remember that they have a pastor, and they just brought the boy to my office. And I've learned not to say, okay, can, can you try? 
there is one leaf that if you are drinking this leaf it's out of fear that it make you to be prescribing for somebody who come to you what to use I just believe God and I rebook that devil and after I pray okay God bless you on the watch night eve you know there used to be testimony in church this boy just came he was giving testimony cancer have disappeared I think he went back to the hospital they said what stage 4 cancer amen now what I want to bring out from there is that you, hold, you should hold the answer that's what I'm saying So because of that, you must be provoked. Amen. Amen. There is no longer permanent members anymore. When they know you can't solve their problem, they go and look for them. Uh, sometimes uh, there is a wisdom in me. If I know my life is not secure here, let me go and look for I love pastor. I will still be your son. I will be come and be greeting you. I love you. I love you. I love you. But only that I can't stay here. But they won't tell, they won't say it by mouth like that. You just see them this eh, my house is far. We have built our house to eh, on That's where we park. So we now say eh, Amen. 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 Why is it that you are not using is that for the conviction and the conversion of sinners. You will need the power of God. We are told in, you know, let me just read it because of time. You are called, as number three, you are called to attend to all human problems. The first one is that you are the answer. If any man seek, let him call for the answer. Um, call for the. Let him call for the elders of the church. Then this next one I'm talking about now is that. That. There are problems everywhere. That needs attention. And I was shouting yesterday that these problems are raw material for revival. Go to YouTube. Just type. Asusa Street Revival. You'll be challenged. Not this stage managed miracle, so not this uh, this uh, occultic miracle you see. That you know, flesh will begin to cover bone in your presence like this. Then another reason why we have to be provoked is that in order to checkmate all these fake miracles, satanic miracles. Now let me go to second to the last which is number five here now number one is that you must be a son number two righteousness number three passion for soul number four strong desire then number five prayer with fasting uh, we have read Mark chapter 9 verse 28 and 29 uh, can we have verse 29 Mark chapter 9 verse 29 or let's have 28 first. 28. 28. And when he was coming to the house, his disciple asked him privately, why couldn't we cast him out? Next verse. And he said unto them, this kind. Can I hear that from everybody? This kind. Can I hear it again? Can I hear it again? This kind can comfort by nothing. Meaning that there are other kinds that you may eat a bowl of pandemonium and still do. Meaning that there are other kinds that you don't need to really fast before you do. There are issues you don't need fasting. But there is this kind. This kind miracle. And I command the anointing to rest upon you now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, Jesus said, they have been having, you know, testimony. You, you remember Luke chapter uh, chapter 10, 
when they went out for oh yes he said but this kind can comfort by nothing but by what prayer and fasting it's undodgeable. There's nothing we can do to it. We read this scripture yesterday. Luke 24 verse 49. When I came across some group of men of God, an army is rising in this country. I, 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 I just protect them with names. An, an army of prayer warriors, intercessors. Is rising. I see some of them in the YouTube. I was touched. I've been doing it once in a while, but during the last um, night of change, that you can pray for longer hours. You need this anointing on you. You begin to train yourself. What I mean is this: you have program your church. Night of power or whatever I need. I know we Pentecostal we do programs. Am I right? I say, Am I right? Okay, and you have one, and I know the way you used to prepare. Sometimes we can go for drive fast of uh, three days, four days, but in that drive fast, if they gather the prayer you pray in that three day fast, it's very small. <laughs> the time you used to sleep is there. The time you use for and read Bible and which is good and uh, listen and do a lot of things just but if it's anointing you want you must pray for hours. Now look at this scripture. And behold I send a promise of my father upon you but tarry. Do what? Tarry. Do what? I wrote it down somewhere in my book. I said, ability to tarry long in the presence of God brings down the anointing. Oh, you want to go out there? I, don't, I know maybe there is no evangelist here. You want the blind to see? Ah! You want the cripple to walk? You want the deaf to hear? This kind can come forth by nothing. You know, there's a difference between sickness and disease and infirmity. Look up here. Difference between infirmity and sickness. There's a difference. A blind man is infirmed. Anyone that is incapacitated is infirmed. Who is not able to function normally. That's infirmity. A cripple is infirmed. Cripple is infirm. One who is blind is infirm. One who is deaf is infirm. One who is dumb is infirm. One who is all those level is infirmity. Epilepsy. Autism. These are high level of problems. Why? Because the demon that is operating behind these problems, they are not ordinary demons. You remember when the disciple of Jesus when he was sending them out that's Matthew chapter 10 verse 1 the Bible says and Jesus gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out. Now, you pray to a realm that the anointing comes upon you that no demon will be able to rebel against your authority. You are not hearing me. The one I gave you the other time, the, 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 the testimony I gave you the other time, that's what happened. Just on phone. I said, you demons of his energy, come out in the name of Jesus. And the boy was well. And he went back to school maybe the next day to his university. 
and pastors and church have been fasting for days without any answer. So that will enhance your authority. So that's why I say power must back up authority. You are not hearing me. Are you hearing me? Okay. I'm not telling you that there is a kind of prayer that brings down the anointing. You must be able to tarry long. And do you know what? Our body has been so wired not to stay long in the presence of God. No, it's a, it's a normal thing. We, I know, this meeting is 99% uh, uh, Pentecostals. We really have the problem. We are too restless. We can't stay with God. And remain and say, God, kill me here. Oh, you give me. Ah, something will bring you out. There is a meeting for you to attend. There is a navy ceremony you want to go and do. There is those who need this power, they are scarce people. Oh. They are scarce. Do you know I have you know I went you know I went to my office. I went to pick my phone. There are some somebody post something to my WhatsApp, but I couldn't locate it. Even some of the people tambu. They are children of God, but because of their excesses and if you that some it dictated their prayer life. Some of them 10 hours. Listen, oh, what do I mean? When we are praying, I will have told my wife, to when you are tired, maybe, maybe we're in three hours and it's tired, I just go, I continue. Oh, holy Lord, I will go. Are you hearing me? Oh, are you hearing me? Now, that prayer. Maybe we have woken up in the night or maybe around. We just wake up and pray, you know. You thank God. It's not part of it. Oh. All those thanking. It's not there. All those pleading the blood. All those uh, confession. All those uh, repentance. All those watching in the blood. All those deliverance prayer. Before we start, they are not part of the world. So it is when we say, now we go to anointing. We look at time. We start. Bah. Bah, bah. Is somebody hearing me? Yes, Can you go for 10 hours like that? Non stop. Not the one you stop and go and continuously, non stop. Nobody will say, In Jesus' name, we pray. So when you are tired, you carry your Bible and go. We continue. Why? Because we want something to happen. Are you hearing me? Now, you all may not be like that. You can start from where you are. Have a number of time you concentrate on anointing alone. Forget about all this teaching and telling you, if you have this one, you have that uh, anointing will be growing. Ah, I'm telling you, go back. You can start from where you are. Even if it is 30 minutes, you start co concentrate apart from the normal prayer. Intercession for those who want to be saved. Apart from for the oil upon your head, which is the main ministry. Are you hearing me? Yes, I've told you yesterday, the moment we are talking about anointing, immediately your mind go to miracles. No! Even conversion, conviction, I was in Ife, um last month, invited by Professor Adebayo. But they had the meeting in this amphitheater in Ife. Uh, in OAU. And the message they gave me was about dominion. So when I preach it and the time was going so and I finished, the students were very happy and this and that. And I came down and I sat down. And a young brother just came up and he began to speak. Maybe he felt that I didn't make utter call. That I was supposed to make utter call. I felt ashamed where I sat down. He was now, he used his life, how he was on this campus, and he was, uh, he couldn't finish, instead of a normal four or five years, he spent seven years, and he was in a court seeking something, he got converted, and this and that, and therefore, you have to give your life. He started, and he was now making other call. Nobody came out. He called and called. So when he wanted to turn to shape, he now said, okay, I will start counting 60. I'll start from 60. 60, 59, 
58, he counted, counted, counted until he was able to count his zero. One brother now came. Everybody clapped and this and that. He said, it is the man of God that came that we pray. So I now came out. I now told them the reason why I didn't make a call. And I said, okay. You want to give your life to Jesus? He has spent, I can't tell you the number of time he spent. And time was going. Because they started, the, the, we have entered into the night. And and I just said, okay, now, since you have made another call, and you are there, you want to give your life to Jesus, and people are trooping out. <sighs> Everywhere was filled. Are you hearing me? Now, so, the anointing is not only, the anointing simply means to make things happen in the area of your calling. One of my, I won't mention it because it's popular. He, 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 he does deliverance. When it comes like this, even in that meeting like this, you invite him for anything, that people will be on the ground. Blah, 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 blah. But after it, there will be no testimony. So, some of my members now tell me, don't invite so and so to this place again. No, People only fall down by the no single testimony. So, when I saw him, one day I took courage. He's a real man of God, but people, we, he has, I don't know, I said now there are 40 people here. 40 we complete and there will be addition. Addition after 40. But no testimony. Nobody say, thank God, this and that. I now call him. I say, do you know what? We are at the first time we invited him. 1995. There were people that only are not A small girl like this walked. There are people that they have to call me back at home because when they come, as at 1 a.m., they were still sleeping. So, oh, gee. so that when he was starting. But now he has become popular. So prayer was no longer there. So the anointing, but the it's just like some of us, tongue without power. And I told him, he said, I'm saying the truth. That he's trying to correct himself. To go back to the place of prayer. So may God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, I can't speak much on prayer. But I'm telling you as a servant of God, as a man of God, old age doesn't cancel it. You may not be able to be vibrating like when you were young. But I say, that is why you see that the church die when the man is getting old. I appreciate some of our general that are running all about. They are paying price. You know the price they pay? You know how many hours? Pastor Deboye share his life with us. This man, every year he must go for 30 days. Drive fast. Can you later much break? Lala Leo. At his age, no power doesn't come for nothing. That's why the father he has money to fund those who are praying for him, prayer warriors. So that's why the moment we are getting old, we cannot perform. The church will be going down. And even when you appoint somebody who will be doing on your behalf, it cannot be. If there is a doctor in this place now, and then uh, he now gets other doctors that are helping him. There are still some patients say, no, it's the doctor I want to see. Uh, it's the consultant that I want to see. And God will help us. Uh, let's go to the... Uh, it's not just ordinary prayer with fast. You must be able to fast. Very, very important. That's why the greatest attack of Satan over a man of God is Osa. And you have one, it will die today. Give me a good amen. amen. Anything that will not allow you to fast will die. Amen. Do you know why we fast? Because of faith. That takes me to the last one. Faith. Faith. Can you help me, sir? Or uh, you have clothes for today? Okay. Matthew 17. 
Verse 19. And behold, I send the prophets. Ah. Matthew 17, verse 19. Then came the disciple to Jesus apart and said, Why couldn't we cast him out? Now, look, this is another one now. Yes. The next verse. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hands to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be, shall be impossible unto you. Now, uh, we are closing this meeting. I don't know how I can emphasize prayer. I, I, I said it yesterday. A prayer will take sin from your hand. There are some sin that we confess every day. At our level, at our level, at our level. I'm not talking about adultery. I'm not talking about uh, telling lie like that. I'm not talking about fighting. You know. I'm not talking about be, but there are some besetting sin. When, when you begin to get into the presence of God every day, Spirit of God will yank it from your life. There are some aggressiveness that sometimes you will be you have condemnation and say, oh Lord, I'm sorry. The way I spoke that, I should have spoken like that. When you begin to dwell in his presence and spend hours, do you know what? Prayer will remove sickness from you. Even when you are not asking God to forgive. Because it's by the, after you are spending long hours, some sickness will begin to disappear. Do you know that prayer will take demon from your body? Those of people, I can't, like me, I can't go into long dry fast because of my head. But those who go into long fast, they have told us after some days, bad odor will be coming from their mouth or from their body. At a sad maybe at a seventh day or at I don't know, but I've had. So but now I'm not talking about another aspect that you cannot do without. Many of us develop our prayer lives. Most of the book we buy is on prayer. Believers don't develop, ministers don't develop their faith. You can have the anointing. Just like Elisha got the mantle of Elijah. By the time Elisha got to the river Jordan, it has flown back. The mountain was in his hand with a symbol of the anointing and Jordan was not ready to do anything until he suddenly realized where is the Lord God of Elijah? And he smote the waters. We need raw faith to activate the anointing. How do we get it? Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. Do you know you can be in this church? Well done. Well done. You can be in this church and minister. Miracle will happen. And go to another church and minister. Miracle will not happen. What made it different? There is a church that are they, they normally teach the church faith. Jesus got to the church in Nazareth. He got to that church. And heaven has anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power. And yet he got to Nazareth. According to Mark edition, Mark chapter 6 verse 5, he could dare do no mighty works. He wanted to, but he couldn't. Because of unbelief. What happened? Verse 6. He left. That's how serious faith is. They work together. So as you are praying for anointing, you begin to develop your faith. I can't be sharing testimony with you. I don't know where to start. Sometimes just by sheer faith, a miracle will happen. 
one of our member in those days, because in our church, at uh, that time, even now, the moment I know that a woman is pregnant, I begin to monitor her. I want to know where she has registered. All those cares. So, we got to Bible study. I have not been seeing them for the past two weeks or thereabouts. And their house was very close to the church. I now sent my wife, please go and check on uh, so 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 family. So by the time my wife got there, the man, he met the man, he didn't meet the wife. The man was downcasted. He was a young member. I was not even sure whether he was born again, but I know they are just coming to. And the man was working in a bank at that time. So he now told my wife, he said, My wife was having a breach, eh? and the baby was dead for the past four days. So he was in the fourth hospital of a professor that has an hospital in Akurelia. I didn't know what job on me. Faith is like wine. Mommy, that's what you manifest that, manifested that time. Oh. It's like wine. I say it's not... Po- no, he now said he has just signed in the hospital for special operation. And the operation is that they will pass instrument through her and chop the body of this dead child small, small until they will evacuate I say what? It's not possible. The handkerchief I was using to, to brush my face, I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just gave, go and tell her that that kind of thing is not possible. Tell him to run to the hospital now. Just rub the tummy and bring it back to me because it's not for, it's me that use it. If he was mature believer at that time, he would not obey. It's a young convert. I was not even sure whether he was yet born again. It's not the Lord that is coming to. He took it, and the distance would be like from here to UI. When you go to some, go to, go to UI, it should even be more. By the time he got to the hospital, they were wheeling the woman to the theater. He just said, doctor, wait, wait, wait. No oppression. No oppression. My pastor have prayed. Oh, you know, professor. Ah, he was angry. He didn't even look at his face. He just walked up to the woman and rubbed the tummy and turned back and went out of the hospital. He said, your, your, your wife will die. He didn't wait for the rest. So he came and took taxi back to the church. So he dropped it by already. I was already teaching for Bible study. It's a Bible study day. Then he gave it to my wife. So by the time he went back, the moment he appeared, they said, Which church do you attend? Do you know what happened? They said he has not, he will not have got a taxi. When the baby just turned, to correct direction. So, the head engaged. The head was coming down. No labor, he was coming down. So, he was now shouting, doctor, baby, doctor. Nobody answered because they felt that it's practically impossible. So, and um, he was shouting. I think one nurse was just passing through and so, hey! It was the nurse that raised alarm. And then she delivered the baby. This baby have the color have turned to green, and the one say, My baby is not. He said, You don't even thank God. So they now look for cellophane paper, put the baby inside. So they wanted to weigh so that they can record the weight of the dead baby. And where they were weighing the baby, the baby cried out. <laughs> now, I didn't go to the mountain to go and pray and fast. But this thing we call faith is not your making. You can't say I want to have faith now. Because sometimes we do 
is a spirit. Just like prayer is a spirit. Those who have prayer, spirit of prayer, it can grieve them while they are in the dining table and they are eating and they abandon the food and go and begin to cry. That is spirit of prayer. The same thing is faith. By the reason of the revelation you are you are you you you, you are eating by the reasons of what you are reading, and it was as a result of the books I was reading at that time. Let me give you this last testimony. I've been reading about I don't want to mention, and he gave a testimony that, that his uh, uncle's son ran mentor, and uh, he was in asylum. He now went to the place to go and visit to go and visit that boy in the asylum. And the moment the boy was chained, though, chained, leg hand. He said, the moment he entered, he said, he stood up, said, my brother. He recognized, said, please, come, loose all those chains. Loose, loose. Oh, yeah. Take him to my car. He said, and they drove all the way from that place to Elori. The boy who have not slept for days, slept off. <laughs> slept off. That they have to carry him to the upstairs. And yet, he didn't wake up. When I heard that, something was moving me. So, not quite after that, I was coming to the church. And I saw one Sele woman in the front of the church. Oh, what's your Sele? Ah, what's this one doing here? So, they now told me, I say, eh, this woman has been waiting for you, and it's on Bible study day, to see me. That, eh. So, I now come near her, I say, Madam, what happened? He said, my son is just coming to this and he has run mental. He's totally mad that nobody could restrain him. That they even lock him up now in the room. That I say I should come and see you. Don't forget what I've said, told you now. Huh. I said this is an opportunity. They still jump on me. I said okay. I will go a step further. I say uh, two ushers. You, you, come. Follow this woman. When you get there, don't pray. Just tell him the pastor wants to see you. Go with that authority. And the woman started weeping. He thought I was not serious. He said, ah. He, I said, I shouted them her. Follow them. You think I'm... So by the time, it was the other part of the town. It's far. So I've, I've started Bible study. So when they got there, they now met a crowd of people in the front of the house. They knew when the mother went, they were expecting a magician that was, was bringing. And so these young brothers, they just were tied. They just went through the crowd. And the mother stayed by and said, it's in that room. The, woman, the mother could not even come there. He said, it's in that room. So they just went there boldly. And they open the door. So the pastor say, "You should follow us." He look up immediately. The countenance change. He look at himself. He saw that he was rough. He used hand to straighten. You know, these are the signs of somebody who is normal. You know. It's okay. He now follow them. These brethren, they said they were three. When, when, when they saw that. This boy was following them and they passed through the crowd and they went. So by the time they got to church, I was already teaching. And do you know they now brought they now brought him? They didn't even ask him to stay at the back. They brought him to the front to come and sit down. This is another dimension entirely. Well, how do you get this one? Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. Sometimes it's not because we have not prayed enough. Because we have not developed our faith. It's not maturity that gives us faith to. You can be a mature believer. You can cancel people. But this kind of stubborn faith. My wife is a witness. Sometimes when I do faith seminar. We have brethren that will leave and go to the hospital. To raise up dead. If I'm lying. That is hellfire. One of our brothers. Yeah, young convert. Because in those days, I used to teach faith seminar for three days. And he had been working in the state hospital. They have not paid him money. So he now went, fresh from seminar. And he saw they were willing a dead man 
taking him to the mortuary. He said, stop, stop, stop. Stop! They didn't stop. He just went there and I'm late. It, you, spirit of death, come out! And God honor faith. And the man jacked back to life. So, are you hearing me? So, when you put all this in together, but the crown of it all is that, go and wait upon the law. Shall we rise up? Amen. Amen. I'm going to lead three prayer points. Amen. 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 Number one. Anything that stands between me and this anointing, let your blood, the blood of Jesus, remove it. There's nobody who doesn't have one thing or the one element or the other. Sometimes it could be pride. That you yourself, you don't, you don't know it's pride. Sometimes it could be laziness. Laziness is a sin. Laziness is a sin. It's a sin. It could be laziness. You can't suffer. You can't endure anything. You can't endure heat. You can't endure anything. You can't suffer this body. You are too delicate. You are too fragile. You ask God, I'm sorry. Let the power of your spirit purge me totally from me. Shall we pray in the name of Jesus Christ? Yes, anything, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, whatever anything, oh Lord, that is standing between me and your power, in the name of Jesus. Let's pray, let's pray. It could be Mr. Uza. It was Uza in the days of Isaiah. Uza in our life must die. Anything that hinder us from assessing the power of God, from getting the anointing, sometimes you have had a greater message than this and nothing happened. It could be laziness. It could be lack love of comfort. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Number two, want to pray. Hunger. Lord, if you can pray that prayer through in your privacy. Some people, they have no hunger for anything. There's nothing they want to die for. They don't want to die for anything. They, don't, they are not hungry for anything. They love the level they are. They are not aspiring for greatness. If they see somebody is not volunteer, she The spirit of hunger and thirst. Let it flood my soul. Shall we pray in the name of Jesus Christ? The spirit of hunger. Let it flow. Let it flow in the name of Jesus. Maseri makapasori magapo repo sori masakayaraba. Let it flow, let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. In the name of Jesus, stir up my heart, plant it, O Lord. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus, mighty name we pray. Finally, the spirit of prayer. Sometimes we need to pass through deliverance because we have it. The Spirit Himself helpeth our infirmity. That's King James Version. It means that all those things that inhibit, that is, that hinders, or to be able to flow in prayer. Eh? Flow in prayer. That Him, if He doesn't die, there's no way. So you are going to pray. And I'm telling you, you know that witchcraft is plenty in our time. So they are not in a hurry. Let me talk to you, to our people. They are not, are you in a hurry? Oh, God bless you, Joe. Uh, pastor is in a hurry. 
I want testimony after this convention. Amen. That'll be testimony. Oga singer, are you hearing me? Eh? Okay. One problem we all have is ability to tarry long in the presence of God. Why? So There is no day. You are going to pray. All those powers that is, you know, that is that is making it impossible for me. That is working against the spirit of prayer. In my life, die. Oh, you are praying in the name of Jesus Christ. Let them die. Every power, every power, I say, die. In the name of Jesus. 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 Maseri masakaya rababa. Reke posori masakaya rababa. Reke kere bo sori maseke yere bo. Rema sari masaka yari bo boye. Remo sori maseke ye. Rema gaga raba saka yaraba. Rama saka yaraba saka yaraba. Remo sori masoko yoro bo. Rema gaga rima gaga gaga. Rama seke yere bo. Remo sori maseke ye. Rema saka yarabo. Rema mama baye. Remo soko yo. In Jesus, mighty name we pray. Can I pray with us? Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. You have shown us the answer to the question of the apostles of Jesus. Why could not we cast them out? Why should demons begin to rebel against our authority? Why is sickness after we have prayed? And it appears our prayer go nowhere. Why is it? You have shown us various things. All that you have spoken to us, Lord. Let the Holy Spirit begin to enlarge it in our hearts. In the name of Jesus. The atmosphere is so dry. Demons have invested our atmosphere because of lack of prayer and intercession. To minister under this kind of atmosphere, we need your power. We need your anointing. Therefore, Lord, I pray here this afternoon that the anointing of your spirit will come upon all your servants. In the name of Jesus. Anointing for deliverance from mighty, mighty attack. Anointing for deliverance from from, from demons. Anointing for deliverance from to break yokes anointing for signs and wonders to open the blind eyes to heal the crippled to heal the deaf and dumb to heal his insanity I command the release in the name of Jesus I command the release in the name of Jesus I command the release in the name of Jesus I command the release in the name of Jesus and I pray for every one of your servants here every activities of witchcraft agents around their life around their life that make the anointing not to flow even when they pray I break their power in the name of Jesus all that anyone has eaten from the tables of the devils God has his own table David said thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies but the devil also have his own tables in which they come indirectly and they come to pollute our life to receive the anointing. Even when the anointing is there, they will not allow you to touch people. That kind of attack, I break it. Break in the name of Jesus. Amen. From witchcraft agents of darkness, break in the name of Jesus. Amen. From marine agents of darkness, break in the name of Jesus. Amen. Break now. 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 Break now, break now, break now, break now. In the name of Jesus. Every mark of the enemy upon anyone here that anywhere you go, they make sure nothing happens. 
by the power and the blood of the Lamb, I destroy the mark in the name of Jesus. Every embargo over any one ministry here, one can still have the anointing and have embargo upon his life. Embargo, limitation in the name that is above every other name. By the power of resurrection, break in the name of Jesus. Limitation over the, the men of God, women of God here this moment. Limitation by powers. Limitation by forces of darkness. Limitation by agents of darkness. And they have formed a strong goal and said nothing will happen. In the name that is above every other name. This limitation, break in the name of Jesus. Break in the name of Jesus. All ministerial limitation, break in the name of Jesus. Beginning from today, I pray that the dream God give you will begin to get fulfilled. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that everyone here in our own path privately, I pray that your spirit will stir us up. We stir us up. Amen. That we pray without ceasing. Amen. That we assess the anointing. Amen. May we never rest until the anointing comes. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And I use the opportunity to pray for your servant here. This convention will make it different from now on. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Today I release upon you anointing for signs and wonder for miracles for healing receive in the name of Jesus every conspiracy around your life who are walking but they are walking against you walking against the kingdom but physically they look like you know uh, they look like those who love you Lord expose them now all the veil remove it now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus and I pray over this ministry, whatever anything that causes limitation, break in the name of Jesus. Limitation, break in the name of Jesus. And every usher of the devil, I destroy them now. And I pray that the children whom the Lord has given you, which are for signs and wonder wherever they are in this city, let them begin to flow inside. In the name of Jesus. The covering of God will be upon you, upon your wife, upon your children upon the entire members of the church. In the name of Jesus. All the ministers represented here, I pray that their ministry will begin to break through. In the name of Jesus. As you are leaving this place, I pray that the hand of God will rest upon you. You stand on the pulpit this coming Sunday, fire will come out. Fire will come out. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I pray for mommy, strengthen her. Strengthen her. Strengthen her. I want even the anointing to be greater than the one they have been giving testimony about. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give her the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.